I'd like to welcome you to our webinar today. We'll be going over some of the benefits of a citizen request and work order system. Just a brief comment on why we're putting this together. We've spoken with a lot of small cities and found that many are still tracking citizen requests and work orders on paper, email, spreadsheets, or other antiquated systems. We felt this webinar will provide a helpful education on why you should consider moving to a software solution and show you how easy it is uh, to use one. Let's go through some of the benefits. Reduce paperwork. Enough with looking for papers. Not only is it better for the environment to reduce paper, but paper-based systems make it very difficult to find information. There is no search button. Eliminate duplicate entry. Re-entering work orders into a spreadsheet for basic reporting is a waste of time. No more educated guesses. Without reports on the types of issues being submitted, administrators and council members have limited insight in making decisions. Stop losing emails. No more email inbox searching. Email is an amazing tool, but it is not a good way to track work requests. No more calls to check the status. When work requests are kept in email, your ability to follow up is limited to making phone calls or waiting on email responses. This can be challenging when someone is out sick or when multiple people receive the same email. Improve communications. Centralized information. When all notes and updates are in a centralized system, everyone with the appropriate permission can access this information immediately. Automated communications. Some systems have very flexible and powerful workflow capabilities that can send email updates and do many other things automatically when changes are made, such as when a status is updated. Share knowledge. Retain valuable knowledge when someone retires. When people retire, a lot of knowledge can leave the organization. This can put a municipality in a vulnerable situation, especially in the areas related to public safety. Empower staff with knowledge. A knowledge base is a tool that helps staff easily document maintenance procedures. The right tool allows staff members to easily find this information, even on their mobile device while out in the field. And leave a legacy. Retiring staff can retire with a sense of joy, knowing they have left a legacy of knowledge for the well-being of their city for years to come. Automatically keep records. Instant record history. When records are kept in a central system, all history is easily accessible. An audit log. Some systems have an audit log that shows who made the changes to a record, what changes were made, and when they were made. This creates great accountability. Improve reporting. Centralized data plus powerful reporting and dashboards equals game-changing decision-making. When information is kept in a central location, there's a deep well of data that can be reported on. Having powerful reporting tools and dashboards helps you see information in different ways, which greatly enhances knowledge to improve decision making. Track assets. Knowing asset location is critical. If this information is available, it is often kept in the office and is not accessible when it is needed out in the field. This could be a hindrance for day-to-day -day maintenance or disastrous if responding to emergencies. Extend asset life. Being able to define scheduled maintenance for assets increases their useful life. And maintaining compliance. Scheduled inspections and cleaning of storm drain assets helps you comply with EPA regulations. With a cloud-based solution, there's literally no IT required. You can eliminate maintenance of costly upgrades uh, to hardware and software. All you need is a web browser or mobile device to access your information if the solution is cloud-based. Secure off-site storage and nightly backups. Many cloud solutions can actually provide better security and redundancy than a small municipality can afford to implement in-house. Save time and money. When all these benefits are considered, a lot of time and money can be saved. So let's jump into a demo of our ShareNet solution so you can see for yourself just how easy it is to use a solution like this. So we'll start by looking at the Citizen Portal. Uh, this is a portal that can be set up. And you can have your own uh, city banner, branding here, and image. Um, this shows the uh, currently open issues. Um, so you can see different uh, pins and then um, what's been submitted, the pictures. If the citizen wants to just double check, they can kind of zoom in and say, okay, um, click here, then see that a, a sign issue that's been down already has been reported. <clears throat> but let's say they have a new issue. All they have to do is click Submit New Issue. And then we'll submit a um, water leak. And 
leaking fire hydrant. And then if they're on a smartphone, they can tap here and it's going to ask their current location. And then on the map, if they want to zoom in more specifically exactly where it is, they can uh, position the pin right on it. They can even go into satellite mode. And then um, let's see if there's a fire hydrant, let's say right there. They can put it right on the, the location. Then they'll tap select uh, files. And if again, if they're on a mobile device, uh, you've got the ability to take a picture with the camera or upload from the gallery here on a desktop. So we'll just use what we have here. And I'm going to let this display on the public side. If I was submitting a code compliance uh, violation type issue, tall grass or something, I'd probably say no here because I don't want it uh, to appear um, on the public side. But we'll do Bob Smith. <clears throat> And this information is not required, but uh, we're saying here that if they put that in, we can notify them when status changes. All right, we'll hit submit. And then what that will do is automatically submit it into the system. And um, also it will automatically notify the citizen. This is an example of what the email would look like. Uh, it says, um, and this is using our email template system. You can totally change these messages how you want them. It does merge fields to show the, the title and then the type of issue it was and the request number. And they can actually reply and add notes to it automatically. So all that's kept within the system. Before we jump into the management side of that, I just want to jump over to one of our customer sites. Uh, what they've done is taken their contact us page and embedded um, our a public site into their contact us page so their citizens can use this and hit submit and then it goes directly into their ShareNet site. All right so let's go back and we'll click refresh here and then now we'll see that water leak and notice uh, we've got a workflow that automatically routed it to the appropriate department already for us but let's go ahead and open that up and we can see the details, we've got the address, the, the geolocation, we can see that on the map. I see exactly where that was, uh, contact information, uh, etc. And if we want to make a change to it, let's say it's now in progress, uh, we want to uh, save and close. Let me just do that and come right back. I mentioned uh, one of the benefits is an activity log. Uh, this log shows you uh, who changed what when. So you can see here that the um, update, the user, the modified by was changed. Here we've got the owner workflow, change the owner. So you can see all this information of uh, what was changed when. And here's the status change from new to in progress. We've got a nice activity log for uh, accountability purposes. Let's go ahead and change this to a uh, work order. It came in as a service request that needs to be evaluated. We'll change it to a work order now. We've got some different uh, fields available for us. We can set due dates, priorities, etc. cetera. Um, and with ShareNet, you can easily add custom fields and, and drag and drop them on our form designer. And this uh, is an example of a custom field, uh, FEMA related. Uh, so if you want to track FEMA events, uh, you can do things like that and do use reporting for that. So I'm going to change this to the currently logged in user uh, you, um, here and hit save and close. And that would have automatically, uh, let's say work order, and that would have automatically sent it to uh, that user uh, via email. Now I'm going to go ahead and go jump on my mobile device. And when you log in, this is what it looks like. And if it's a smartphone, it, it just sizes down nicely to a smartphone size. We'll tap on request. We can see that water leak. Uh, I can also tap on map on the mobile device and see uh, where my issues are. I can drill in um, and, and see what's going on. I think the what we had over here was uh, this service request was the one we were looking at. Uh, so you can see that. But if I go back, just to kind of show you, um, 
we could go there and uh, click on this record, see the details, and when we're done, uh, by the way, we can also click on map and get directions. When we're done, uh, we can uh, add uh, time, uh, so labor hours as well as any parts you used can be logged, so you can track those via um, uh, reporting purposes. You can relate this if there's an existing asset. You can relate it to an asset uh, as well as uh, attach pictures and things. But let's just say we want to click edit and then close it out. So now it's, it's closed. Change that to closed. And then all I have to do is hit save and close. If I want to take a picture, I can do save and attach and snap a photo and automatically attach it. And we'll hit save and close. And we've got a workflow that's set up to automatically notify the requester when a record is closed. So minimal, minimal steps to update the system and then auto notify uh, the requester. And here's the email that was sent back to the requester. Uh, they can see that the request has been updated, see details below, status was closed out, etc. And then if there was resolution that could have been typed in here, that that would be available. So we're totally improving uh, communication, all the information, notes, and updates, all stored centrally uh, in the system. And we've got a robust permission model uh, that allows you to really set granular uh, permission roles for various types of users and groups. And we set these profiles up so you can limit records to, to, for people to see only what they need to see. So on the request, I'm a super admin. Right now I'm seeing all requests. But if you were, let's say, a water uh, department user, uh, you would be uh, have permissions filtered for uh, the group water. So this would be what your queue would look like. Uh, and then you could manage your request, see those requests, just those four on a map, and, um, and navigate around that way. And you would have the same ability on the, on the mobile. And uh, if, if you're, let's say, sanitation, let's see if we have any sanitation issues, a few. Uh, these may or may not be all geotagged. Um, a couple of them are geotagged. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the knowledge base. So uh, we talked in the benefits about the, just the value of documenting uh, work procedures uh, so you can pass this on to other staff members. And this is uh, super um, helpful when people are retiring. They've got 20, 30 years of, of insight of, of where specific things are or how to do certain things. All they have to do is click Add. I'll just edit this one, uh, give it a title, summary for the search result, and just start typing. And you can put images in here. There can be videos, hyperlinks, etc. And then uh, this is English, obviously. This is a procedure. And then categorize it. This is HVAC repair. You can attach files, it could be images or, or, or documents that could be attached, which are also fully searchable. And when they're done, uh, just hit save and close. Now, that's nice, but hey, I'm out in the field, I'm up on top of a building working on an HVAC unit. Um, what do I do? Uh, I need to have some insight here. So I can tap on articles and then come in and search for one of those keywords, find the article, tap on it and now I can see the step-by-step -step instructions I see a picture of the issue obviously in this case is an internal uh, device uh, but all that information is available at my fingertips so that empowers me you know as a staff member working on things in the field that uh, also helps people retiring to, to leave this information legacy of really serving the city well for years to come so we we mentioned earlier uh, the ability just uh, of uh, automatically keeping records up to date. I think we've already covered this basically for any any request. Uh, you've got your core request record, you have notes, you have activity logs, so all that information is all available at your fingertips. And just as an example, if we go over to an asset, let's say and we edit this pump uh, under the water assets, uh, we'll go down, we can see all the related maintenance uh, history for this particular asset. We'll come back to this in a minute when we talk about uh, tracking assets, but uh, let's jump into reporting. 
When you have a, a system like ShearNet, uh, powerful reporting is available uh, right at a few clicks. Here we've, we've got two levels of report builder built in. Uh, one is a, a standard report wizard. You kind of step through and select the columns you want and filters, you know, the, let's say records added in the previous uh, calendar week or something like that. But let me just click on a few of these. So we're going to look at work order performance by department. This is an advanced report. Click there. And then here we can see we're doing a, a group by uh, department, then by category. So you get these na nice counts and then a, a chart up above. Uh, we can see you've got record count, average days to complete. So you can get an idea of the performance by department uh, for that particular time period. So that's one report example. Another one would be like a cost detail. This one shows uh, the asset detail maintenance uh, cost. So for a particular asset, all the different work orders, the, the labor hours and parts used, and the total cost. Uh, another one would be, let's say, this summary report. And uh, you could set these up so that uh, this is showing you all the maintenance that is, was done in the previous, uh, let's say, calendar year. And so you could see uh, the maintenance, and you could it could be set up in different ways in the total maintenance. This, and if these were vehicles, if you spend a lot of money on a vehicle, that may kind of give you an indication, looking at the age, uh, that maybe it's time to replace that. And we also have a dashboard. So you can create some uh, reports and then put some of those on a dashboard. And then uh, you can create multiple dashboards and then put those on a, uh, uh, this little chart part of the dashboard. And then you can uh, click on the pie slice. So... Um, open that up you can see the the details of that particular pie slice and then you can even drill into uh, the details of that record so powerful reporting uh, and and dashboards that allows you to really be informed and and hopefully make better decisions so let's go back to uh, circle back to assets and asset tracking as I mentioned earlier knowing the asset uh, location is critical uh, in, in this case, you could have stormwater assets or, or different assets, and you can see these on a map just like we could the work orders. And get a feel for what's going on here and click on one and see what it is. Also, uh, for um, uh, compliance purposes, well, we've got two things. One is extending asset life. Uh, let's say if you're a vehicle, you want to uh, set up maintenance uh, to uh, maintain that vehicle. You can uh, do scheduled maintenance. In this case, this is a drainage ditch, and it's not like an oil change per se, but uh, we want to do an annual inspection and cleaning if needed. So all you have to do is click on maintenance, uh, or preventive maintenance, click add, and then you can define what it is, uh, the schedule, and you can define multiple schedules here way beyond this list. And we've, we've just recently inspected this. Next inspections the next year. And I'm going to create a, automatically create a work order and assign it to Sue here two days before this due date. So this uh, PM system is going to automatically take care of that. And then once it's done, it's going to automatically uh, change the cycle each time the work order is closed. So that about wraps up our demo. I hope that's been helpful. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of a picture for what a system like this could look like. There are lots of uh, other areas to, to look at in ShearNet, um, you know, inventory to track parts and uh, labor cost. Uh, you could even uh, track FEMA related items uh, so that you can uh, do FEMA reimbursements. There's a project apps, uh, projects app that could be added on here. You can, uh, do things. Uh, this kind of relates to the advanced reporting again. This shows uh, for capital budget purposes uh, the, the projects and their, their approval status. Uh, here's pending approval approved and it's a page by physical here. Probably already have budgeting covered but it's a tool that's available if you have, if you have need. Uh, with organizations you can manage all your vendors um, and uh, all the details related to a vendor and all this information is available on the smartphone as well so if we're on the smartphone 
or a tablet and we need to get somebody's uh, phone number all we have to do is go here we can do a search for it find their number and then if I tap if I'm on a smartphone it'll automatically dial that number and I can see the related contacts uh, at that uh, vendor site hope that's been helpful uh, please contact us if you'd like to learn more